Homer Plessy was born on St. Patrick's Day, March 17, 1863. His birth certificate lists his father as Adam Plessy, a colored carpenter, and Rosa de Burr, a seamstress. Both were classified as free people of color. Adam Plessy died when Homer was seven years old. In 1871, his mother, Rosa Mary Victor M. Depart, who worked as a clerk at a post office. Like many members of the Dupart family, Homer Plessy pursued the craft of shoemaking. During the 1880s, he worked at Patricio Brito's shoemaking business on Dumaine Street. In 1887, Plessy became vice president of an activist group called the Justice Protective Educational and Social Club, a group dedicated to reforming public education in New Orleans. In July of 1888, Father Joseph of St. Augustine Church married Homer Plessy and Louis Bordenave. In 1889, Homer and Louise moved to Farber Treme, where he registered to vote in the 6th Ward's 3rd Precinct. The Civil Rights Act of 1875 gave provisional rights to same treatment in all public facilities to all citizens no matter race, color, or prior condition of servitude. What America found a way around this with Jim Crow laws where all citizens were equal but were to be separated. All public facilities had separate accommodations for black and white citizens. White Americans had the better end of the deal with their accommodations being far superior to that of the black citizens. This led to the East Louisiana Railroad Committee to hatch a plan to challenge the Jim Crow laws in place in New Orleans where white Americans and black Americans had coexisted so well together they were hard to tell apart and law separating them were more trouble to enforce than to carry out. Their plan was to have a black American by the name of Homer Plessis sit in the white compartment of a train and once apprehended, a suit would be filed taking the case to the criminal district court or the parish of Orleans. The reason Plessy was chosen for the role as a catalyst for the case was Plessy was only one-eighth black and at simple glance could pass as a white person. They would try to use this to find sympathy in white America. It was the Louisiana Legislature's passage of the Separate Car Act of 1890 that became the impetus for Homer Plessy's train ride into history. On June 7, 1892, Plessy boarded the white car of the East Louisiana Railroad. When on the railroad car he identified himself as black, he was arrested just as the Citizens Committee had planned. It was June 7, 1892, when Homer Edo Plessy was arrested for violating the 1890 Louisiana Separate Car Act. That day, Homer Plessy arrived at the Press Street Railroad yard near the Mississippi River. He boarded the white only car of the East Louisiana Railroad's number 8 train that was bound for Covington, LA. The conductor stopped the train and summoned a detective who forcibly dragged Homer from the train. Plessy's arrest took place at the corner of Royal and Press Streets. He was released on a surrogate bond that evening and members of the Citizens Committee met him at the police station. They argued the laws that advocated separate but equal accommodations were unconstitutional and would use the Civil Rights Act and the 14th Amendment as the center point of their argument. A pioneer in the Civil Rights Movement, Ibion W. Turgi was the lead counsel for the Plessy case. Turgi proceeded to appeal the case to the Supreme Court in 1896, where the case Plessy v. Ferguson was carried out. Justice H. Brown of Michigan delivered the verdict in favor of Ferguson. Decision to uphold the Louisiana Jim Crow Law the majority decision in Plessy v. Ferguson served as a organizing legal justification for racial segregation for over 50 years. Even though he didn't live to see that day, he longed for many, are grateful for the courage he had and will be remembered for many generations to come.